Dr. Chol came here from sunny San Diego, California with the blue team and all the latest, greatest technology you can possibly have because this patient is all the way from Maryland complaining of genital pelvic dysesthesias due to this Tarloff cyst. So we're going to do a very careful, minimally invasive Tarloff excision and yeah. imbrication utilizing computer navigation, minimal invasive retractors and all the minimal invasive tools, neurophysiologic monitoring and delicate Asian fingers because she's the delicate flower and we need to do a good job. She's a retired immigration lawyer and we need to get her back to her life. Started. I'm using computer navigation. I use that to make the perfect incision right over the bullseye of the surgical target site. Now I'm using delicate Asian finger technique to expose the area of the bone that I need to enter to repair the Tarloff cyst. I'm excited. So here are the epidural adhesions. Usually this should be surrounded by a thin layer of fat and things should just come off the dural membrane without any attachments whatsoever. You can already see that there's adhesions here. You can already see through it. There's a little nerve right there. That's a sign of inflammation. Like that. So here's the example. This is, remember I said the Dural tube should be surrounded by a thin layer of fat and without any adhesions. This is the cyst right here. The central dural tube is right there. It's surrounded by fat and there's nothing attached to it. But right here, there's no fat and there's adhesions. Another sign of inflammation. That's my story, I'm sticking to it. So here's the cyst. I've not exposed it fully, but here's a demonstration of this issue about inflammation and epidural adhesion. So this looks like the proximal margin of the cyst right there and look where the fat starts. And then this is the distal margin of the cyst. Look where the f uh, fat starts. And look how this fat is stuck to the cyst. Look at that. And look at all these little blood vessels, these injected membranes. It should be totally white. And then here's the regular dural tube. It's much whiter, as in color, and I can just dissect this off with just this instrument. So this is another highly inflamed Tarloff cyst, and I'm dying to know what's going to be on the inside of it. Oh, I thought this was a nerve inside the membrane, but it's a blood vessel on top of it, and it's also adherent. Look at that. Compared to the white thing, look how thick that is. Look how abnormal that looks. It makes sense that she had a good response from the diagnostic injection. And there's the proximal margin. And look how proximal to it, I can just dissect this without anything. Look at that, it just peels off the normal part. That's the purple right here. There's nothing attached to it. This on the other hand, epidural scar tissue and, it, and adhesions, also known as kakapupu. I'm going to actually use a real instrument to dissect this now, but so far so good in terms of finding the pathology and expecting the findings that I expect. That doesn't make sense, that sentence, but you know what I mean. Okay, I've got the distal margin, proximal margin, which is also part of the central dural tube. And it's amazing how non-adherent everything is to the normal dural tube and everything was just stuck down like gum on the cyst but now I've got control of either end just got to find an entry point how's neural monitoring okay this is not multiple honeycomb cysts it's one single cyst it looks like more of a dural ectasia and here are all the nerves right here that are all plastered up against the other side. And look how everything is stuck together. And this one is not a ramen noodle, but it almost all, it wants to go like this and up and around. And that is amazing how much inflammation there is in here. 
Look at all these little filmy adhesions. Also known as kakapupu. If this got bigger, I can just see how this nerve would just start to go ramen noodle-like. Just making sure there's not going to be another one-way check valve in here. Neural monitoring signal's okay. Nice. Look how good that looks. Okay, that actually looks like a nerve root now. We're doing a valsalva maneuver now to make sure there's no leak. Holding a 30. Hold it. Hold it. Okay, you can relax now. That looks good. Air migration. Oh, that looks so good. That looks good. That looks good. <laughs> I examine this. This cyst was like this, right? Look at the normal part of the drill tube here and here. And look at this area that's all red. This is where this was bulging out on this side. Same thing with this nerve root. Look how white it is over there. You can't see it, but it's white way over here at the traversing nerve root. And it's red right here. So the pulsations touching this also causes inflammation of the central dural tube as well as the S1 nerve root right here. S1, S2, S3 is down there. So cool. The pathology is so obvious to me now that I'm here. So for those of you that don't think Tarlov cysts can cause symptoms, yes, most Tarlov cysts are asymptomatic and I bet you they aren't red like this. They're not inflamed. But the small proportion of Tarlov cysts that are symptomatic, they're symptomatic because it has a pathological process that ends or is manifested in part by really bad inflammation. Look at that, it's just all red right there. That's what we call abnormal. And look at this nerve compared to the rest of the dural tube. Clearly red, injected, angry, kakapupu. I'm gonna do the three layer Chol Kim special. Thin layer of Duragen. This is highly purified collagen membrane. I'm going to wrap this around, put a thin layer of fibrin sealant, put another thin layer of duragen, another thin layer of fibrin sealant, and a slightly bigger layer of duragen membrane, and another layer of fibrin sealant, the three ply. This is like building a ship in a bottle. It's so tedious. I can see why other surgeons don't want to do it. It's just like annoying to no end. But it's worth it. Worth it. I don't want to make it circumferential because if this constricts, I don't want it to be its own stenotic forming, stenosis forming structure. I want it to be semi circumferential, like a nice hug from a dear friend. Not too tight, not too loose. That's the fibrin glue. It's basically the part of your blood that makes you clot. Is that crazy or what? Blood is like a miracle liquid. It will fit one cell at a time through a thin little capillary. But if it gets clotted, it will clog up your sink and you won't be able to fix it. Crazy. The human body is crazy, crazy, crazy awesome. Comes the third layer. The key with the third layer is to tuck the edges underneath the bony margins and that helps prevent it from coming out or dislodging. That's the theory anyway. Medicine technology is so cool. I'm so glad I became a doctor in this day and age. But I won't be satisfied until we can treat cancer like infections. We have anti-cancer drugs that are like antibiotics. Because in the olden days, they used to treat infections with like mercury. Ew. And that's what we do for cancer. We treat it with like a poison. And we're going to look back on it and go, you treated it with a poison? You crazy. I think I'll be alive to see that. And if I'm not, I'm going to be very, very sad.
surgery is all done. We did it through that little incision right there. Now we're putting on a waterproof dressing. It went perfectly because perfect works and perfect is just barely good enough. And I'm really optimistic that you're going to get a great result. So don't make me sad by not getting great results, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm already on the maximum dose of Paxil. I don't know how much more I can take. <laughs>